says something like this. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the harvesters are the angels. Now, if you've got a more modern translation, it won't read like that. If you've got, for example, a New King James version of the Bible, it will say the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end, not of the world, but the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Now, some people could say, oh, Andrew, you're just splitting hairs a bit. Well, it's a very important hair to split because the Greek word for world is cosmos, where we get cosmology from, the world. And that's not the word here. The word here is aeon. And we ref- in English, we usually render that eon, an eon of time, a period of time. Aeon. It's transliterated into English as a i O-E-N, aeon, an aeon of time. And that's what Jesus actually said at the end of this time, at the end of this age. And I've got on the screen there a picture of a couple of different Bible translations and I, I highlight that the, some of the earlier translations rendered that word world. But, you know, they didn't do it with the understanding that it was the end of the cosmos, the end of the world, because the word world used to mean different things as well. And when we talk about, you know, Christians should not be of the world, it doesn't mean you shouldn't walk on the ground. It doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, live, breathe, eat, do all those kind of things. That word world, not of the world, is a system. It's a way of thinking. It, it, it's associated with, with something other than the cosmos. Now, I think it's really important that we look at the eschatology or how the early Christians understood end times. What did the early Christians think about when, when they thought of how time was going to unfold, what, what the Bible actually prophesied? And I think as we, we look at Scripture, we'll find based on scriptures similar to this and others where Jesus spoke about the end, and I'm going to explore it in a moment, that the early Christians had had a concept that something was going to end, there would come an end. Next to to these Christians, there would come a resurrection. And you, you remember that when Jesus was confronted with the tomb of Lazarus, uh, Mary came out to him and said something, you know, if, if only you'd been here. And, and, and Jesus said, don't you believe? And she said, you know, I, I, I do believe. No, your, your, brother, your brother will live again, don't you believe? Oh, yes, I believe that he will live again on the day of the resurrection. So there was this common belief that there would come a time when there would be a resurrection. And... This appears throughout the, the New Testament that there would come an end of this order, this, the, the way the world's going. Then there'd be a resurrection. Then there would be judgment. God would judge. And then from that judgment, some would be punished and some would be rewarded. Now, we find that principle in Matthew 25, where Jesus describes... Um, In in Matthew 25, verse uh, 30, 31, he says, Then the Son of Man will come in his glory with all his holy angels, and he will be seated on his throne. And it says he will then separate the nations like sheep from goats, and he will reward or punish according to his criteria. And Jesus already said in Matthew chapter 10, Don't just fear the one who can destroy your body, but fear the one who can destroy your body and soul in Gehenna. So there's this concept of punishment and reward into the future that the early Christians seem to have. Now I'd like you to turn to the Old Testament and I want to do something that perhaps you've never heard before. Perhaps you've never heard before. And this is a look at the eschatology contained in the feasts of Israel. In Leviticus chapter 23, 
we find the seven feasts of Israel, the seven annual feasts of Israel listed in Leviticus 23. Now, if you're someone who reads the Old Testament and thinks, good grief, there's a lot of killing. There's animals being killed. There's wars being fought. What on earth is all this about? And I guess as a young Christian, I thought the same. I thought, boy, this is a pretty gruesome. This is pretty gruesome, this Old Testament. You know, animals being killed, ceremonies that sound pretty, pretty bloodthirsty ceremonies. But, you know, each of those we, we read in the New Testament were actually what the New Testament calls a shadow. They weren't the substance. They weren't the real thing. They were kind of like visual pictures of what God would one day do. And I want to show you that as we look at these. The first one mentioned in Leviticus 23 is the Sabbath. And it it says here in, in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 3, six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwelling places. Now, what was the Sabbath? We know that the Sabbath was a time of rest. And Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But, you know, the rest that we have in Christ is because of the work of Christ. Christ has done the six days of work, if you will, and we can enter into his rest. And that's what it says in Hebrews chapter 4 that Christ has done all the work necessary for salvation. There's not a thing you can do to earn your salvation. Not a thing you can do. The Sabbath is really a picture of the work of Christ and the rest that's in Christ. The rest that's in Christ. So the the next one we we notice is the Passover, and that's in verse 4. And it says, these are the appointed feasts of the Lord, the holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at the time appointed for them. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. And it goes on and it gives the, the uh, arrangements for that. And it goes on and includes the Feast of Unleavened Bread in this ceremony of the Passover. Now, the Passover, we know that they took a a lamb, they killed the lamb, they took the blood, they put it on the lintels of their doorposts and over their windows, and that lamb, the blood of that lamb, was then seen by the angel of death as he passed over in Exodus chapter 12. And that became the Passover ceremony. And that, that 